Coming up on Max Sog Adventure International, we will be showcasing some of Jim Egner's 3D printed Adventure Team accessories. There's lots of good stuff here to cover, so let's begin. Let's start things off with this one. This is a reproduction of the G.I. Joe Adventure Team Night Surveillance Equipment. Now, I don't have to tell you if you're a Adventure Team collector how hard it is to find one intact and complete. And this one is actually functional, somewhat like the original. Let's assemble this night surveillance set. Hopefully I can do it without causing a disaster on the camera. It pretty much goes together like the original. It has like small peg holes in the bottom and the legs pop in. And the radar dish basically goes right on top, just like the original. And you have a completed and assembled night surveillance set. I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with um, Jim Egner's um, 3D printed uh, items. I was never a 3D printing fan before because it just, to me, it just didn't look very good because of the, the little striation that's caused by the, uh, the printer, uh, the filament style printing machines that they have. But whatever Jim does uh, with his machine, he must have some really dialed in settings because these things are really really close I mean you'd have to like put your face up right right up to it to even notice the striations and so really I'm a born-again 3d printing believer man um, now the night surveillance set comes complete with um, the, the blue uh, parts and the silver, and it comes with the, uh, the little drum set in the back so that it uh, will um, let you do the, uh, the, the functions that the original has. And it also comes with this uh, headset. Now the wires are mine. I made those. Um, and um, so you'll have to source your, your wires uh, for that. But that's, that's basically it. Now I do recommend that when you put the, the drums um, sticker back there, you see I kind of you know, um, rubbed it a little because I've been trying to keep it stuck down because what would happen is the edge would lift up and as you turn the crank, it would get caught in the walls and would basically peel back off. So what I did is I took some clear packing tape and I just sort of put a tape over it and in a way kind of laminating the graphics and I will demonstrate in a second how that works. Now this is what I like about um, how uh, Jim works. He uh, won't just settle for um, just having a static model. If possible, he is going to implement everything that the original did, including its function. And this night surveillance, although not 100% exact, it does function. And I'll demonstrate that right now. You just crank it. 
and it's it's not as smooth but it does it does work so you see the the dish move as well as the graphics and after a while of, of doing it it kind of smooths itself out and I can feel it kind of smoothing itself out right now but there it is it is a functional um, a unit and that's caused by the gearing um, with a crank and then you have a, a screw type gear here and it engages that gear back there and makes makes the whole thing do its magic and uh, I do have the yellow version which is called the equipment tester and I will be putting that side to side next to let you see exactly how close these 3D printed uh, replicas are from TK560. And here are the two side by side. The yellow one is the original vintage equipment tester from Hasbro. Um, as you can see, that one is complete. It's one of my favorite pieces. It is hard to find and it, this was not cheap to get in this condition. I regretted not getting it um, years ago because when I finally did get one, I did make sure I got a pristine one, but it, I did pay some money for it. Not too extravagant, but you know, still something that I wasn't comfortable completely paying out. Anyway, here it is next to the night surveillance version, which is basically just a remold of this in blue. And you can see from this distance that if it wasn't for the reflection of the light, you really wouldn't even see the, the striation marks, which you know what, As, uh, the longer you have this, the more your eyes won't even perceive those uh, striations. And it looks every bit as good. And let me tell you the logic of, if you're a purist that, you know, are, is like only Hasbro in my collection types. And um, so let's say you have a boxed example and you're kind of itching to, you know, open it. Well, you don't have to because all you have to do is you know, just get a 3D printed copy and display it with your boxed example. You know, um, these things are great and um, they even feel like the originals uh, in terms of weight and volume and in construction. Um, so, um, I think Jim's work is unmatched. Uh, he has the uh, design, eye, the aesthetics, even in his original uh, work, the stuff that he does that weren't reproductions of anything has that, um, you know, very cool 1970s adventure team vibe to it. Anyway, we'll move on to the next item. Now, you're probably wondering what this is. This was actually something that I collaborated with uh, Jim. And uh, oddly enough, and uh, thankfully enough, he actually made it. It is the box for the Adventure Team Headquarters table. And I've always thought, you know, that uh, that box was too short and that uh, there were some possibilities that were missed. So out of the blue, I suggested to Jim, hey, can we put, can you put drawers on that to use all of that space, that wasted space 
uh, that the box uh, does because essentially the box was used to store all the little bits in the uh, headquarters and I thought well it kind of limited the displayability of the set and the playability and adding these drawers just kind of add a little bit more of the dynamics in the set. I also suggested that you know that uh, he put like little hangers for headphones because the set does have headphones. I also went ahead and bought a couple of these headphones from Jim, the ones with the microphones on it, which I don't believe the originals ever had. And let me tell you, these things, if you've ever seen um, the second scene from the uh, Mystery of the Demon's Eye, the personnel in that scene are wearing these and you'll see how well these fits on the figure. Um, even like the biggest adventure team head, which is the Mike Powers, uh, can wear this and it fits just perfectly. And of course, what would be the use of the headsets if you don't have any kind of ports to put it in, which is this unit in the middle here. And that kind of gives it a uh, impression that this uh, table bottom does more than just store things in the drawer and um, what's great about it is if you don't have a top you can also purchase that at uh, Jim's uh, Etsy store and um, simple construction basically has two drawers I might actually even request one that has three drawers that might be cool I think even three drawers, but put it at a height where it's still very usable for them. So Jim, if you're hearing this, um, let's see if we can make that happen, okay? <laughs> anyway, it's another one of those great items um, in, in a gym shop. And um, if you have a Adventure Team Headquarters, Pick one up. Uh, I myself plan to get several more of this because it's great for all kinds of dioramas. And um, those drawers really add some play value to an otherwise very plain accessory, which is a cardboard box. Anyway, we'll move on to the last item in this video. And here we have our last item. It is a 3D printed replica of the Adventure Team Magnetic Flaw Detector. Now, this is one of those things that I really love about the Adventure Team series was the, the, the little gizmos, the equipment. And uh, I really wish they made more of these because um, they're, they're so neat, I mean, and it kind of, the design aesthetics also was in keeping with the time of how they did things back in the 70s. Anyway, these things were so popular that it appeared in, to my knowledge, two sets. One was the Revenge of the Spy Shark uh, Adventure Team set, and later on, the Mike Power Special Assignment set. Um, and it, it appears on a lot of my videos because, I mean, if you think about the uses that this thing has, I mean, I've had it where, you know, my guys are using it to detect, um, you know, uh, small damages on submarines to like checking space meteorites and stuff. Anyway, this is complete with everything the original has. Um, the batteries and um, it even has the small jacks that go on the batteries. And like I said before on the, um, the night surveillance set, you know, just have to source your own wires and those, those aren't very hard to do. And it, it plugs in 
just like the originals. Back there. And it also comes complete with headphones, just like the ones with the microphones, and fits the same way. Fits over the heads beautifully. And the the scanner unit. And he even molded the uh, the little lenses on there in, in a separate red material, which is great. It makes it easier too to um, attach the the wires. Uh, again, these are my wires, so uh, it does not come with wires like this. Um, and let me tell you guys, it comes really close to the originals, and I will show you that next. Can you tell the difference which one is the original? It's kind of hard to tell at first, but this one is the original Hasbro piece. Um, again, uh, really, it's the striations that give it away. Otherwise, if this had been maybe th uh, resin printed, um, it, you might not be able to tell at all. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm a fan of the 3D printing thing now. And um, I've yet to try uh, the works of uh, Sean Huckster and Brad Curry. And, but I plan to pick up some pieces from them someday. Because, uh, because of Jim, I'm, I've really opened my eyes to the 3D printing community and I've dabbled in it myself and hopefully I get to someday 3D print my own things. Anyway, uh, there'll be links in the description to uh, Jim Egner's Etsy shop so you can check out all the stuff that he makes. And um, I gotta tell you, uh, my Christmas list consists of a lot of items from that shop and um, let me just say uh, um, now if I haven't said it already that Jim has not paid me or does not pay me to uh, review any of this stuff this is things that I've bought with my own money and uh, I'm just telling you how I honestly feel about this stuff anyway that's all I have for you guys right now I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Max Sog out.